Welcome to the video tutorial on Bayesian statistics. We're going to get into regression in this video, and this is going to be a series of videos because there's a lot of interesting things that happen once we start using JAGS and we start seeing what happens uh, to our answers when we kind of blindly go about things. But the this is the first part, and this is just the setup. We're not actually going to use JAGS in this one, but we're going to use this example over and over again. So for the next series of videos, so I thought having one by itself would be good because it gives us the basic definitions before we jump too far into the future and, and assume you know lots of things. Okay, so regression is basically we have two variables, uh, x and y, in which y is related to x, okay? And uh, here is our example that we're going to use. I like this example. Um, it's uh, data is freely available. It's the Sydney Hobart boat race. So every year, a boat race happens from uh, Sydney in Australia, New South Wales, to Hobart, Tasmania. And here's a picture of it, and it's on Wikipedia if you want to get this picture, uh, just so you can see what happens. But they go an incredible distance uh, in boats. Okay, so uh, the race is about 630 nautical miles, or 1170 kilometers, and is considered some people say it's the most difficult yacht race and here's a picture of a yacht and there's the uh, information uh, for it from Wikipedia uh, so I think this is the boat that wins the most so just if you're aware wild oats okay so if you go to the repository linked in the description below you can get this data at sidhope.txt Okay, and we're gonna read in the data and look at it. So I read it in here as data one, read table, blah, blah, blah. And this is just reading it and it's a table, so it has tab separated. So that's why you see this here and that's why we're not using read.csv. Uh, if we look at the top, you can see the data consists of the yacht, the year, the days, the hours, the minutes, and then time. So time here is in total number of minutes that it takes to get from Sydney to Hobart and you can see these are the yachts that won and if you look at the actual data you can see a lot of it and it goes until 1997 and the reason I have it stop early is so we can go out and get other data see what newer races look like see how well our model performs in predictive performance in the future but we can't do that right now because we don't have a regression model yet okay so here i just made a simple plot of it you can see that it's going downhill uh, and that kind of makes sense as technology gets better things seem to get faster if you happen uh to notice anything over the recent uh history of humans uh once technology kicked in we can do a whole lot of things faster than we used to do uh and so what we're interested in is fitting a line to this Okay, that's what regression is. It's it's there's this relationship between the year and how long it takes. You can see the relationship. It's a negative relationship. It's not real tight in the sense of that all the points are like stacked up right on a line, but they tend to be going downhill. So it'd be a negative, uh, moderately strong relationship because the corners are empty. We would say it's moderately strong, but it's not stacked up on that line. Uh, and then we would also look at it and we'd say, you know, it's, it's, it looks like it's fairly linear in this case, in this data. So this is what we're after. So, uh, what we're interesting, what we're interested in here, or what I just said here, uh, we want the equation of a line that best fits the data. And that's the essence of regression. We want a line that somehow is the best, uh, in the sense of fitting the data. So how do we come up with that? Well, we need to go back and look at what a line is. So here's the equation of a line. So we have y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Now, this is different than probably what you saw in your first algebra class because there it's mx plus b. Okay. Well, here we have it written this way for other conventions that you'll see much later. Uh, multiple regression, it works out better to have it this way. And if we think about things from a mathematical standpoint, this kind of is a reasonable thought uh, again beta zero here is the y-intercept and beta one is the slope meaning for every one unit increase in x we see a beta one unit increase in y or could be decrease okay 
Um, so let's formalize this a little bit. We're going to see some data. So X1, Y1, remember the data come in pairs. There's a year and a time that went with that year. So it is in a pair. They don't exist separately from each other. X2 and Y2, Xn and Yn. Uh, these are just notations for our data. Then our equation becomes yi is beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus this thing out here, epsilon i. And epsilon i is what's considered an error. So if you're interested, what is this thing? It's an error. So it is the amount the line misses the data. So here's the line. Here's a data point. Is that data point on the line? No. So the line and the data do not agree. There's a miss. They, they don't agree perfectly. So we just draw the line from the data point down to the line. Now, notice that we're going completely in the vertical direction. We're not going perpendicular to the line. That's a different type of regression. Here, we're just interested in the vertical distance. Uh, and these errors, uh, you know, they kind of don't really I mean they have some sort of pattern to them but some are really tiny and some are really big some are really big negatives some are really big positives some are pretty close to zero in the sense that they're really close to the line like these four down here they're they're pretty much on the line here's another one that's about on the line here's another one that's about on the line so they spread out and we're going to make some assumptions about these um so for a frequency test, the epsilon i are the random components of this model. Now, since we're doing a Bayesian framework, there's more things that are random here. Uh, notice I stayed up here. For now, we're going to assume that the epsilon i follow a normal distribution with some variant sigma squared. And, and it'll show up in our model. Uh, but we actually have three parameters from a Bayesian perspective. Uh, well, we have three parameters anyway. But all parameters are random here. So we need to set a prior distribution for these three parameters, beta 0, beta 1, and sigma squared. It needs to be a joint distribution, which is difficult to set up. So we're not going to set that up directly. What we're going to do is we're going to treat them as if a priori they're independent from each other. Okay, so uh, we're setting them separately uh, as if they're independent, not in some, some joint distribution setup. So beta 0, we're going to say, well, I don't know what it is. Could be negative, could be positive. Uh, so I'll make it zero and I'll make it 100 squared as its variance. Okay, and then beta one. I don't know what value it is. Could be negative, could be positive. Well, 100 squared is its variance as well. Sigma squared. I don't know what value that thing is. Why don't we do a gamma one one? These are relatively, what I want to call, naively uninformative uh, values. So uh, that's what we're interested in at the moment. So this is our setup. We're going to go in the next video and set this up in R and Jags and give it a go and see what happens. All right. So I'll see you there.